just the heat goes all the way in into the meat. Kyubi and Jotan, I think, is the cheat code for good yakitori. Hey, Yaki Gang, Yakitori Guy here. Welcome back to the Yakitori Guy channel. If you've been watching since the early yakitori tutorials, you know that I've been talking about how you can make good yakitori on electric, gas, and charcoal grills. And I even recommend starting out with the indoor electric grill because of its ease and convenience so that you can really quickly improve your yakitori skills. However, there's no doubt that the best yakitori masters at the best yakitori shops in Japan all swear that if you want to make the best yakitori, you want to use Kishu Binchotan from Wakayama Prefecture in Japan. And although I got to cook using Kishu Binchotan Japan, here in the States though, I've been using the Binchotan from Southeast Asia as that's what's most commonly available. However, thanks to all the chicken donations from Yaki Gang, I decided to splurge a bit and get this box of Kishu Binchotan from Japan. So today, let's make some yakitori using Kishu Binchotan. And you can just see how it's solid. It's like metal. So imagine if wood that's starting out like this gets concentrated and forms these charcoal. So here it says Kishu Binchotan. And Kishu is basically the old way in Japanese to say Wakayama. So this is Wakayama Ken, Wakayama Prefecture. This is a 15 kilogram box. Goes for about $300. And for comparison, this is the Binchotan from Vietnam that I use. It's not as high pitched. Same size box, about $125. And here we have, this is ogatan. Ogatan is made by taking wood particles and baking it just like you would with binchotan except. So this is actually made from one whole piece of wood, basically a long log, whereas this is compressed, man-made version of this. In this box, it does say binchotan, that's actually incorrect. It's ogatan right here. So binchotan is actually made from actual wood and Ogatan is basic compressed. So as reference, we have your Ogatan for this box it usually goes for about $30, $40. Binchotan from Vietnam, $125 to maybe $150. This is Binchotan from Japan, Kishu, $300. So just different, different price points. And in case you're wondering, here we've got bag of lump charcoal. Very, very, very light. It will not make any clanking sound. And this will go for about $10 a bag. And ultimately, you're paying for how carbon dense the charcoal is. The much more carbon dense it is, it's gonna be smokeless, odorless, higher heat, lasts longer, perfect for yakitori. So binchotan is made from solid wood. So you can see the wood outline in these. While the most famous kishu binchotan, it's made using the ubame oak tree. The binchotan that's made in other countries can use trees from their local region. So for example, these binchotan made in Vietnam, they're using the local fruit trees native to that region. And also binchotan comes in different sizes because of the different sizes of the branches. So we have the thin hosomaru and the medium komaru. And as we get larger, we get the large jomaru. And one thing to consider is although these look thin, they started out much thicker. Started out as a thicker branch, and as it got baked over the days, basically just gets concentrated and becomes these thin sizes. And you may also have seen ogatan charcoal. So these are ogatan. Basically, they come in various shapes of maybe squares or cylindrical. And so binchotan is gonna have these natural wood forms and shapes. Ogatan on the other hand are gonna be made in molds, so it's gonna have these straight shapes. Oftentimes you're gonna see a hole in the middle too. This is all just part of the manufacturing process. I believe this is to release some pressure as these are basically the wood particles, sawdust, bamboo particles being compressed together. So when I ask Yaktori masters what they like about Kishu binchotan, they always talk about the heat retention, the high infrared heat, basically the reduction in flare-ups, the reductions in smoke, basically it just keeps that natural chicken yakitori flavors. Also because of the heat retention, you don't have to basically replace the charcoal as much during service. So a lot of these really helps that yakitori chef just really focus on grilling that perfect yakitori. However, all of that comes at a cost as Kishu Binchotan, that box costs 300, the cheaper Asia-made binchotan, anywhere from 125, 150, and lump charcoal, which makes it really hard to cook yakitori. Those are 10 to 15 dollars a bag. So I got some test skewers ready. Let's go outside and grill up using the kishu binchotan. So 
let's go ahead and light up these charcoals. I'm gonna be using a chimney. So you want smaller pieces like this. And if they're longer pieces, hopefully you can break them by smashing it. I don't want to get it too hot, so we're going to lower the heat. So when lighting a bean jota, a few things to consider. One of the dangers is it may snap and crack, basically make large uh, like fireworks, like kind of explosion sounds. And when it does, basically the, the bean jota can shatter. So I always recommend never really put your face, eyes over this. Just stay as far as you can. Keep the temperature low. If you try to basically heat it up too hot too quickly, that can cause snaps. Also, if you leave your bean chotan basically out in moisture, like humidity and whatnot, that can get in and cause cracks too. So definitely be careful. Also, you see that basically I'm using a stove, propane stove over here, the gas tanks here, line here. This is definitely one of the safer ways to light up bean chotan. As bean chotan gets hot, it really emits a lot of that heat to the outside area. So in this case, we have the gas tank out here. You may have seen me in other videos using a portable stove where the tank is really near the hot bean chotan source. That is definitely a much more dangerous way. So if you have one of these bigger stoves, I definitely recommend it go this way for lighting up your charcoal. So this charcoal has been going on for five minutes. All right, so the charcoal is nice and hot. Get this inside. Ooh. 1309, 1340, 1399, 1400, 12, 30, 1399. So right from the beginning, we're looking at around 1250 to 1400, which is definitely hotter right off the bat than the Vietnamese bean chotan that I've been using. Let's raise the temperature a bit by fanning it. Sending in the oxygen. Let's go do a reading, 1415. So fanning it got it up to 1500. So if you ever want to get that temperature up, to let's say sear that steak, fanning is the way to go. This is chicken fat. Chew. Seasoning the rods for a grill. Let's go ahead and do the lean meats. So we have here tenders and the breasts. Tenders and breasts looking good. Let's go ahead and start doing some fattier pieces. So we got the negima and we got the drumsticks. Chicken tenders with wasabi cooked on kishu bean chotan. Fluffy, it's white meat, but also very juicy. Very locked in those, locked in the juices inside. Mmm, simple but so good, chicken tenders. All right, the breasts with yuzu kosho made on kishu bean chotan. Nice bite. Juicy. Chicken breast is usually, you know, drier, but in this case, it's plenty of, so, still juicy. You can even get it more flavorful if you put some chicken fat, brush it on top. So far, so good. So you can see it golden, the skin nice and crispy and golden. That's what we want with yakitori. That's the thighs, got the drums. Still a little bit. It needs more golden up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. Flip it this way. So, so far I'm liking the kishu bean chotan. It's just very controlled heat. We haven't had any flare-ups, even as the fats drip. It's just creating smoke. The steady flavor, steady crispiness. It's looking good. 
Now let's see if we add additional fatty skewers. So in this case, we got breast skins, combination skins. Let's see how fat will change things up. And we got some wings right here. Fan it a bit. As the fats from the chicken skin drips onto the kshubin jotan, creates the smoke. It's basically chicken vape, but no flare up. So this makes it really easy to cook on. So the negima, let's go ahead and dip it into the tare. Back onto the grill. Same thing with the drumsticks. Get it. the tare back onto the grill. Let's get this dipped in again. Ooh, smoke it. Wish you can smell it right now. It smells so good. All right, we have here negima with tare. Hot. Hmm. Oh, the skin came out really crispy. Could be one of the crispiest skins I've had with my negima that I made. And it's just the heat goes all the way in into the meat. Juicy. Mmm. Kshirbin Jotan, I think, is the cheat code for good yakitori. Wow. Costs three times as much. I don't think I'll be using it all the time, but there's a noticeable difference between the yakitori I can make. Drumsticks. Crunchy, crispy skin. Crispier than what I normally do. It's still juicy, meaty yakitori inside. Wow. Same chicken, just different charcoal. Noticeable difference. Just costs a little bit more. <laughs> Looking nice and golden, so this is good to go. All right, got the wings. Bone should come right off, right here. Bone off, boneless chicken wing. Crispy skin, but the meat still juicy. Just salt. No other flavor needed. Got the skins, got the breast skin, this combination skin. Let's go with the breast skin. Crispy outside, chewy inside. Maybe it's crunky. Mm. <sighs> so good. Combination skin. Yes. All right, so there we have it. Basically, we got the same chicken, the same cutting, same skewering, same grill, same grilling time flavors, but difference in charcoal. Noticeable difference in flavor, texture, aroma, the deeper flavors too. Kishibin Chotam definitely makes yakitori better. The charcoal's been lit for an hour. Doing a quick temperature check, mid 1100. So the temperature has decreased just slightly, but I bet we can get it up with some fanning. And also moving around the charcoals, exposing the underside, glowing orange. Yep, 1200, so it's gone up. So just like what the yakitori masters say about the best yakitori comes from Kishu Binjodan, I have to agree by doing sort of side-by-side -side comparison based on what I normally use and what I cook today. It's a very noticeable difference. Now, is it a you know $125 versus $300 difference? 
I think that's gonna be up to you. Uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to use Kishibichi all the time, but on the special occasions, I have this box now, so I definitely would like to use this when I want someone to try basically the best version of the yakitori that I can make. So in regards to yakitori made on electric, gas, and other types of charcoal, whether it's lump charcoal, ogatan, other types of binchotan, I have those on this channel. So if you haven't checked those out, go back and, and look at those. My mission is basically just try out all sorts of equipment, tools, ingredients, and show you guys. So you guys can basically pick and choose what's gonna work for you. Not everyone's gonna wanna use $300 box of kishu binchotan. Maybe some restaurants do, so at least now we have the additional information to make those decisions. All right, so I still have some more skewers in the back that I wanna grill up, maybe enjoy with some ice cold beer. So that's it for today's video. So if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe, let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments. And if you really enjoyed it, you can always donate chickens. That is basically how this channel is supported and it really helped me buy this box of Kishu Minchotan so I can review it for you guys today. Actually, pause. Can I take a moment to give a shout out to Julie from North Carolina in case you're watching this? This message literally made my day and tear up a bit. It's been two years since starting this channel and lately I've been deeply thinking about the purpose of all of this and he definitely helped to keep me motivated to learn more and share more about my love for yakitori with the world. Thank you Julie so much for your chicken donations and this message. So that's it for today. See you guys in the next video. Bye Yaki Gang.